Good morning. Great Britain watched in horror as the continent was subject to the tyranny of the Nazi blitzkrieg raids. Churchill galvanised the people of Britain to prepare for their finest hour. The Americans looked up to find a Soviet Sputnik satellite in space. Russia, their enemy, was winning the space race. It was a crisis of confidence, if nothing else. Their response? Kennedy committed to putting an American on the moon with the immortal line, not because it was easy, but because it was hard. They didn't know it could be done, nor how much it would cost. More recently, this top man, who I'm pretty confident most of us would know very much, uh, very little about, if it wasn't for recent events, has risen to similar challenges and echoed the words of both Kennedy and Churchill. All of them face threats that have terrified and electrified them. These same threats have also worked to galvanise them, as their people work to focus on a shared endeavour, a shared vision that gives meaning to their lives. Good morning and thank you for joining me on today's Manufacturing Mission, Vision and Values What's the Purpose webinar the third in the cycle of business series, each of which has been developed with the objective of helping ambitious owners and managers drive their manufacturing company forward. My name's Mark Woods and I'm a director of Statius. And our mission is to help ambitious owners become great leaders. We want to help them and their team improve the way in which their work works. And to accommodate that, as we work through this webinar, and the series will provide you with hopefully valuable collateral, how-to booklets, checklists, templates, examples and questionnaires, some of which we will work through during the webinar, all of which are detailed in our resources booklet will be made available to you at the end of the webinar. And we believe the things that we do should act as a lubricant. We want to work with you to improve and smooth how your work works. We want to help you generate and deliver better strategies, better measurement, my favourite bit, engaged people delivering the bit that you're interested in, the better results. So who do we work for? What's our credibility? Interestingly, or perhaps otherwise, most of us are engineers in one form or another. Some are even like me, apprentice served, albeit many years ago, and it's a long time since I've picked up a spanner programmed a CNC machine. I have more recently developed a manufacturing strategy. Anyway, we've worked with both large and small manufacturing companies for about 30 years. Some of the big guys include GEA, the International Engineering Company, Schwingstetter, a manufacturer of construction pumping solutions, and the Vita Group, specialising in foam solutions and products. But our core customer is owner-managed customers like Hunton and John Mays, subcontract engineering companies, UK Exchanger, manufactures heat exchangers, or IABRA designers. They manufacture some pretty cool medical stuff. Essentially, our ideal client, a subject we will be covering as part of the series in detail later, are ambitious manufacturing managers that want to grow themselves and their team. So, what's the agenda? Oops. We're going to talk about the current manufacturing situation, profit versus purpose, mission, vision, values and purpose again. And then where do you start? So first, for the current situation in manufacturing. These are just a few stories taken from the FT, the Times, the engineer and the manufacturer. Labour is a problem. Factory growth is reported to be at its weakest for years. Clearly materials and their supply is an issue, as are a range of any number of other things. We've also got the impact of the disarray caused by our glorious government. But these are all external influences which critically influence how you make decisions. So added to these might be internal issues you might want to address. Processes insufficiently defined or robust to get estimates out of the door on time, or indeed the job done on time problems with getting money in, problems with people and staff. But equally, there are also opportunities. 
the manufacturer reports uh, funding help for the EV supply chain. The engineer reports manufacturing and eyeing a rise in manufacturing from 10 to 15 percent of GDP. I'd love to see it back there as well as reports pushing the positive effects of digital transformation. So given these types of internal and external issues, the legitimate question is how can these big company things like mission, value, vision, values and purpose assist with these issues? When we ask, as we sometimes do, what's the purpose of an organisation? The first answer is usually we get is profit or in the corporate world to deliver shareholder returns. Indeed, it's carved in stone. It's the mantra of some business school. Obviously, profit is necessary for organisational survival, but making a profit should not be confused with the organisation's purpose. Just as breathing air is necessary for each of us to survive, we can't assume that breathing air is our purpose. Air is to human as profit or probably more accurately cash flow is to a business. When we talk about purpose, we can inspire people. When we talk about profit, we invariably turn most people off. There's a great systems thinker, a guy called Russ Akov, that offered that the purpose of an organization lies in development. Development of products and services, development of worker skills and understanding, development of a market, development of infrastructure, and development of the community. And as we know, many organisations publish their mission, vision and value statements. But what is the purpose? The question above is actually two questions. The obvious one, what's the purpose of a mission, vision and value statement? The second is perhaps more interesting. What is the purpose of an organisation? What is the purpose of an organisation and how does that differ from mission, vision and values? That's really the focus of this session. So let's look at them one at a time. But before we do so, I think the trick here is to begin with the end in mind. As I understand it, J.K. Rowling started writing the Harry Potter books, I think there were six, knowing what the last line in the last book would be. It's a blistering example of starting with the end in mind. The point is, if you start with the end in mind, you can work your way back and see what you need to do for each period, be it year, quarter, month or week. And a bit like an airline pilot or a ship's captain, the destination is known, but they actually crisscross the perfect course for the entire duration of their journey. And it's only at the point that they crisscross the perfect line but they are on course. 99% of the time, they are not. So at this point, let's first define and flesh out what we mean by some of these terms. Vision is about your future, perhaps the end point. It's the last line in the Harry Potter book. It's your destination, the aspiration. Its future focus and usually describes where you want to get to and what success will look like. Some describe the vision statement as your big, hairy, audacious goal, which I think is a Jim Collins term. He's the guy of good to great fame. And the archetypal version of a vision statement is probably Bill Gates when he said in the 80s, I want a computer on every desk and in every home running Microsoft software. Others might include Oxfam, a just world without poverty. IKEA's is to create a better everyday life for the many people. Being an engineer, I'm more of an old straight six Triumph TR6 man. But Tesla's is to accelerate the world's transition to a sustainable energy. So what's a mission statement and how is that different? The mission statement is your vehicle. It's the perspiration, not the aspiration. It's focused on the here and now. It usually describes what you do, what you get paid for, and it often attempts to set you apart from your competitors. Wikipedia cites a guy called Vern McGuinness, who suggests that a mission should define exactly what it is that a company does and does not do, 
as a result, it should it or could exclude some ventures or activities. It needs to be broad enough to allow for future growth and development. You don't want to constrain potential lucrative areas of development. It needs to set you apart to distinguish you from your competitors in some way. It can and it should serve as a framework to evaluate current activities. And it should be clear and understood by everyone. Ultimately, your mission statement seeks to justify your organization's reason for existing. Again, let's have a look at a couple of examples. Coca-Cola's is to refresh the world. How simple is that? Ted's is even simpler. Spread ideas. Ferrari's is to make unique sports cars that represent the finest Italian design and craftsmanship, both on the track and on the road. The vision statements are about the future and what you want to become. Mission statements are much more focused on what it is you currently do. Now let's take a look at how those things are done. Values are the principles that guide behaviour. They serve as a framework to guide the daily actions, decisions and behaviours. They represent the standards by which, standard, by which staff will be measured. Most organisations will understandably be committed to achieving their goals, but how they go about achieving them is equally, if not more important than the mission and vision themselves. A company's values are the principles that guide behaviour at work. A core set of company values makes it easier for a company to make decisions, quickly communicate principles to clients and customers and hire people with the right attitude. Creating a business is a bit like creating a community. And if you want the community to act cohesively, you need a shared ethos that drives how the community functions and helps you to choose who you invite into your community. Conversely, if you don't own, define and care about the values of your firm, your firm will evolve on its own, potentially in ways that you don't like. So defining values is important because they provide a guidance for ambiguous scenarios and sometimes tough trade-offs. Values should be the touchstone that guide behaviour. And how you do things manifests itself in the systems and processes you develop to execute, execute the tasks necessary to deliver value to your clients. It's about the culture within the organisation how you do things and more importantly, having the discipline to hold the organisation and your people to these guiding principles. However, values in many cases are still set down as nouns, honesty, integrity, innovative. There's a guy called Simon Sinek and he suggests in his book, Start With Why, and I agree that nouns are not actionable. Telling people to have integrity does not guarantee that their decisions will always keep the customer's best interest at heart. Telling them to always do the right thing does. Here we've put a few nouns versus verbs values on the slide. These are our version of what they might look like. They don't have to be yours. And there are others in the how-to booklet accompanying the webinar, which will be downloaded from the link you'll be sent. But the attentive amongst you will have forgotten not forgotten that my original question was, what's the purpose? Companies are born, survive and thrive because there is a group of people, customers, willing to continue to pay them for what they do. These customers get some benefit or some capability from the products and services provided. Consequently, the objective of the purpose statement is twofold. One, to provide a goal for all the operational processes that deliver value, the benefits and capabilities to the customer, because astonishingly, there is often no reference to the customer in the majority of mission, vision and value statements. And two, to unleash innovation in order to better deliver those benefits and capabilities that your customers want. Returning to our friend, Mr. Sinek, check out his YouTube videos. He suggests that all inspiring leaders think the same way. All he did was codify how, and he's called it the golden circle. 
He suggests it's the difference between why some companies inspire and some companies don't. Most of us communicate from the outside in the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. However, he suggests that inspired leaders think, act and communicate from the inside out. He comments that all organisations know what they do. Some organisations know how they do it. Very few know why. So if you can get to the why, that is the purpose of the organisation and the communicate it, where the purpose is defined as the benefits and capabilities that are delivered to your customers and clients, the better you can engage with them and your people. The power behind this inside out idea, why first, what last, is that it replicates how our brains work. So because of this, we get much more of an emotional engagement as we're concentrating on why it takes us to a point where we're no longer concentrating on selling products and services. Instead, we are helping to solve a problem. Clients problem. The organization's purpose is often quite hard one for people to get their head around, as we usually take the business school mantra that the purpose is profit, money, cash in the bank. These are key, critical even, but as already noted, they are the result of delivering good products and services. So let's look at a few, a few familiar examples detailing the difference between the things organisations do, the what, and their potential purposes, the why. What is done at school is they teach kids. Their why might be more accurately described as inspiring a quest for lifelong learning or perhaps to help each file, child find their passion. A library loans books, but their why might be something about satisfying the desire for literature or learning. A security company provides security services, but their why is probably something about the protection of people and assets. Taking a couple of more notable examples, Kodak made cameras and films, but the benefits and capabilities they delivered was something around capturing and sharing memories. Blockbuster video, certainly when I was a kid on every street corner, rented videos and DVDs. But the benefits and capabilities they delivered was about getting entertainment and education into their client's home at a time of their choosing. These days, it's less about the home and more about a platform of their choosing. And once you've identified the benefits and capabilities that you deliver to your clients, everything stems from there. Your key processes should be aligned to delivering on that purpose. If you do that, you'll stand far less chance of missing market and technology shifts like Kodak and Blockbuster. Uh, like Kodak, the Blockbuster Goliath got taken out by the Netflix David simply because it did not properly articulate or concentrate on the benefits and capabilities delivered to its clients, its purpose. And once you've identified your benefits and capabilities that you deliver to your clients and following a bit of wordsmithing, like Kennedy and Churchill, you can engage and inspire your people. Incidentally, just so that you know that we thought about it, our why, our purpose is to help you deliver better strategies, better systems, better measurement and engaged people delivering the all important better results. Our purpose is about you, our clients, the benefits and the capabilities you get from us. So what you might ask, like but different to an organisation's mission or vision statement, the purpose of an organisation should motivate and direct people uh, in the organisation in the pursuit of the common goal. It has been suggested that the questions required to test a purpose are, does the purpose reflect customer wants and desires? Is what the purpose suggests worth doing? Does the purpose reach for the hearts and minds of people who work for the company? And is the purpose noble and does it serve? Sadly, very few companies develop a purpose which meets this criteria. So by default, if they don't have a purpose which aligns the efforts of people to the organisation activities, it could be argued very few companies will achieve their full potential. 
A second reason for articulating your company's purpose is to encourage innovation. A recent McKinsey report suggests that many manufacturers are still 10 years behind in the digital transformation. And people are our only source of creativity and innovation. And innovation is critical to long-term prosperity and survival. So if you're focused on the benefits and capabilities delivered to your clients, you can actively engage your people in innovation which is just a fancy word for the activities that seek to find better ways of delivering stuff, the benefits and capabilities to your clients. And given that there are a whole bunch of displacement technologies coming, 3D printing and additive manufacturing, batteries, water batteries, sand batteries, industry four, unlike Kodak, Kodak and Blockbuster, you'll know it's time to change track. Once you've identified your why, the next question is how will you go about developing this stuff? There's no one right way to do this. While there are some guidelines, every company has its own story. But a process that seems to work is create a team, but initially work individually. Study. That's not review, that's study. Think hard. Don't simply review what you do, who you do it for, but really, really study what, why and how and who you do it for. Mull well, the questions over. What should our mission be? What is our vision? What is our purpose? What are our values? Jot ideas down. Throw your ideas out and discuss them. Ask staff, clients, suppliers, family, friends. Shortlist your individual ideas for group discussion and then regroup a number of times. Regroup as a team, read aloud and workshop what you've got so far. Then it's a case of refine and repeat. Finally, I'd say, let it settle, leave it for three months, six months, come back and refine it again. And here are some questions that might be useful to guide you. There are others in the how-to document you'll be sent following the webinar. Incidentally, the how-to takes you through this process with examples and exercises to undertake both individually and as part of a team. So it includes these and other questions. Is this something that's likely to be long lived? Will we still believe it in five years, in 10 years? Is it something we're willing to hire on? And perhaps more critically, is it something that we're willing to fire on? What we're looking to do is to create a small number of powerful mission, vision and values and purpose statements that taken together become your North Star, your guiding light. Any crisis will bring nations or companies values to the fore. Stress levels are raised, processes falter, attention is diverted. You need a guiding light. The Corona crunch and the cost of living crisis provides an opportunity and a trigger for manufacturing companies to ground themselves in their purpose. That is to focus intensely on the core questions. Why do we exist? Why are we here? And most critically, whose needs are we here to meet? People and not just millennials want to work for companies with missions and business philosophies that resonate with them intellectually and emotionally. We fundamentally believe that the core question any organisation must answer when communicating its purpose starts with its customers. What are the needs that the company is being paid to meet? Considering the challenges facing manufacturers right now, alignment between employee purpose and organisation purpose is critical. Staff need to see why they should continue to show up at work amid such difficult circumstances. For centuries, theologians and philosophers have told us that seeking meaning is central to human experience. So it should actually be no surprise that all Cynic's TED Talk, Start With Why, is the third most watched TED Talk of all time. The events of today and the last few years have plunged many companies into a big and unsuspecting hole. 
we may be uncertain, our people may be uncertain. So as leaders, we're going to need to continue to reassure some of our battered and fragile people, rescue and re-engage some of our customers, resurrect our finances, rebuild our balance sheets and pay off our bank loans. But people don't care about that. Staff are motivated to do their best work because of the role the company plays overall, not because it maximises the wealth of a few directors, or in the case of quoted companies, often thousands of nameless shareholders. If you get this right, your staff will want to and care about doing a good job for your customers. Give them a North Star to aim at. Give them a framework to behave within and unleash their potential. Like Churchill and Kennedy before us and Zelensky now, we can galvanise and inspire our troops to help us help others and restore the battered fabric of the manufacturing sector. I'd love to see manufacturing back at 15% of GDP. You'll be sent an email shortly with access to the slide deck and our resources document, which details all sorts of templates, examples, questionnaires, that we can make available literally at the drop of a hat around a variety of issues. Have a look through if you need anything before the next webinar, let us know. So what's next? It could be you want to talk, let's agree a time for a Teams or a phone call, either as a one-to-one -one or as a conference call. You might like to take it from here on your own. You might simply want to know about future webinars, but the first part of call is probably the download. As a reminder, our purpose is to help you deliver better strategies, better systems, better measurement and engaged people delivering the bit that you're interested in, the better results. One final word of thanks, I'd also like to extend my appreciation to the sponsors, Jerovian Wealth, independent financial advisors specialising in owner managers. Good people to talk to, they've rewired my head a couple of times. Thank you for listening. I hope it's been helpful.